Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! So in this video we will be learning about tenacity, a topic that you will learn in the early phases of your pharmacy school journey but later on as you practice as a pharmacist you will realize that this still plays a huge role and in this video i will discuss a little bit about tonicity and also the clinical significance so majority of patients in hospitals receive iv fluids i think we all know that but they receive it for several reasons right it could be to replace fluids that they lost from vomiting or let's say diarrhea they want to maintain body fluids correct electrolyte imbalances one of the main reasons why we use it and they also serve as a medium for medications. Now, the human body is made up of about 60% water and is divided into two main compartments. So we have the intracellular and we have the extracellular. So intracellular is just referring to the cells, right? So inside the cell, cellular. And then extracellular is referring to outside of the cell. So extracellular now we have the three different parts of the extracellular which is the intravascular so inside the vascular so the blood vessels inside the blood vessels the interstitial which is between the blood vessels and the cells so the picture right here on the top right kind of shows you exactly what i'm talking about and, and then we have the transcellular fluids also now keep in mind that fluid moves between these compartments by a process known as osmosis. So according to Merriam-Webster, osmosis is the movement of a solvent such as water through a semi-permeable membrane such as a living cell into a solution of higher solute concentration that tends to equalize the concentrations of solute on the two sides of the membrane. So all you're trying to say is that osmosis is when water moves from an area of low concentration to an area of higher concentration in order to form an equilibrium. Now osmosis depends on the osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is the pressure that would stop water from moving through the semi-permeable membrane. So please keep in mind that when you're talking about osmosis, you're talking about water, once again, moving, right? And the osmotic pressure is what's basically controlling how much water can move over. So if the osmotic pressure is high in one compartment, the water is not likely to move over, right? The osmotic pressure will stop the water from moving through that semi-permeable membrane. Now for IV fluids, the osmotic pressure depends on the number of solutes in the IV solution versus the solutes or ions in the blood fluid, as we will see later on. So it, kind of, it makes sense, right? If you have a lot of solutes in a solution, it's very concentrated, right? So we don't want water to leave. So that's why the osmotic pressure in that case will be higher so that water doesn't leave that solution. Then we have tonicity. Tonicity simply tells you how the IV solution will affect the body fluids cells after you administer it. So here we have this picture here. This is a textbook picture. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. So if the IV fluid is hypertonic, right, it's going to make the blood, right? So once we give it, it goes into the bloodstream. It's going to make that bloodstream very concentrated right it becomes hypertonic also so what's going to happen is that the cells surrounding the blood vessels will release water so that the water could go into the blood vessel to dilute it then we have isotonic which simply means that the iv solution that you just gave has the same concentration let's just say as the bloodstream right so in that case there's not really much of a shift of fluid they have this equilibrium and it's moving back and forth and then we have hypotonic so when you give a hypotonic solution into the bloodstream it makes it less concentrated right because it consists of more 
solvent i should say than solutes so it kind of dilutes the bloodstream making it less concentrated so because of that it decreases the osmotic pressure causing the water to leave the cell so how do we determine if an iv solution is hypertonic isotonic or hypotonic it's based on the blood plasma osmolality right so let's just say the normal concentration of the blood so it has an osmolality of 280 milliosmos per liter. So if the IV solution is higher than 280, right? The osmolality is higher than 280. It's known as a hypertonic solution. If it's around 280, it's isotonic. And if it's lower than that, it's hypotonic. Now the tonicity of the IV solutions can be adjusted using this method known as a sodium chloride equivalent also known as E-value, which I will talk about in the next video. So now let's take a look at the tonicity clinical significance. So hypertonic IV fluids, some of the examples here for you. So 3% sodium chloride, really common in, uh, in the hospital setting. So we use it to treat patients with cerebral edema, right? So they have a lot of water in the cells in the brain. So what do we want to do? We want to give a hypertonic solution that's going to make the surrounding bloodstream, right? It's going to make the bloodstream really concentrated, causing the water that's in the cells to leave the cells and come into the bloodstream. You can also give it for patients who have severe hyponatremia. For patients who have cystic fibrosis, the inhaled version of hypertonic saline, once again, it's the same concept, right? So you give hypertonic saline, it gets inhaled, and it makes the airways very concentrated, causing water to shift into the airways to help break down the mucus. And then D10W can be used as a source of calories um, for patients. It's usually administered through a central line because it has a risk of causing infiltration into the tissues, which could, which could cause a lot of damage. So it's usually preferred to go through a central line because those are the bigger blood vessels. Now you want to be careful giving these type of IV fluids to patients who are renally or cardiac impaired simply because the whole idea of these solutions is that you're shifting water into the blood vessels, right? So now you have a hypervolemic blood vessel, and then remember, it's gonna go to the heart, it's gonna go to the kidneys. So for certain patients who can't tolerate a lot of fluids because of cardiac impairment, this would not be optimum to give them. Next, we have isotonic IV fluids. So sodium chloride, also known as normal saline, and D5W. We use this for patients who have low blood pressure, and it's because it expands the intravascular space, right? When you give isotonic IV fluids, they don't really leave the blood vessel, um, and water doesn't really come into the blood vessel neither. They just stay in the blood vessel. So if a patient has low blood pressure, it's a good choice of IV fluids to give them. If a patient is dehydrated, hypovolemic, as I had mentioned, or if they have mild hyponatremia. Once again, because it stays in the intravascular space and is not leaving, you want to be careful in patients with renal and or cardiac impairment. Lastly, we have hypotonic IV fluids. An example here is 0.45% sodium chloride, also known as half normal saline. And we use it in patients with diabetes ketoacidosis because in these patients, they have a lot of glucose in their bloodstream, making the bloodstream very concentrated. So what happens is that a lot of water from the cells will release and go into the bloodstream, making the cells very dehydrated. So when you give a hypotonic IV fluid, it's supposed to dilute the bloodstream, make the bloodstream less concentrated so that the water could shift back into the cells. Now you want to avoid it in patients with elevated intracranial pressure, um, simply because in those patients, you don't want the water or the volume to shift back into the cells as this can exacerbate the intracranial pressure 
and also in patients with severe burns because these patients are already hypovolemic, meaning that they have less water in your blood vessels already, so you don't want to shift any water from the blood vessels out. And that would be the end of this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, or share the video if it was helpful. Also, feel free to leave a comment or question down below. Connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.